I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Welcome back to New York Rangers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to All Things Rangers Bar Talk, uh, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. And by the way, in that intro, I, um, <laughs> I, I gotta say, John, I, I whenever I see Anthony do the, I gotta take a shot, even though I have all the footage and I can watch through it all. I see you shaking your head, and I'm just thinking to myself, what was he saying right there? I need to know so badly. All right. <laughs> Um, so here's, here you go. The Rangers were losers in this year's draft. Shot. You, you can't, you can't say they were a loser in this year's draft right now. There's no way. Even if, even, even with my reaction, I can't say this because we don't know what Brennan Oppen is going to turn out to be. We, Brennan Oppen, for all we know, could come up and be a 30 goal, 60 point winger playing with guys like Kako Lafreniere on the opposite sides of those guys. And he can, he can end up being a good, really good top six score for this team. There, there's no way you can say this right now. That's ridiculous. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? It's going to be shot for me, too. Uh, because they're, these are all just seeds. You don't know if yeah. the seeds gonna, what the seed's going to grow into. And, and, and you know what? I like the Ryder Korzak pick. I like that pick. And then the, 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 I'm going to screw this name up so badly. Um, and Steven's going to kill me for screwing it up because it's another TPS guy, but, uh, uh, Kale Vicenin, if I, if I, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, there's a couple of guys that are finished Twitter posters that, you know, watch a lot of their games and they're, they're saying that he could be a real steal at the end of this round. Like, I don't know how he's going to be in the NHL, but, there are guys that are high on him. Uh, I know a lot of people were high on Ryder Korzak. I like that pick. Uh, my mom has worked with one of you guys. I I, I don't know who that is. And, and considering I was in the hospitality industry, uh, yeah, uh, WVR. Can you tell me where that was? Yeah, if you um, can tell where that was. I can I can tell whether it's me or Mark, obviously. So yeah, and M MG, I think you're you got. This this they got wussified. I, I know you use the better word uh, yeah. for that, but yeah. So, uh, um, and by the way, Chris, this is exactly what I said about I've been replacing Kreider in a few years. Um, and I and because once Kreider's um, uh, Binder and Binder, so that's gotta be you. Oh, that is definitely me. Um, I who is uh. Who is who is that behind? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, Hayes, maybe. Is it? I'm curious now because I, I I I wonder. Yeah, I don't I don't know who that is. And yes, definitely a shot. And um, Kreider's no move clause uh, gets modified in is it twenty? I think it's twenty twenty four. I used I should have known this by heart, but instead I just you know decided to try to sleep this morning. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Oh, it's what happens when you get to bed at 5.30 after work. Um, but, you know, it's just that that's what they were trying to do. That's what they're trying to address. And you know what? Um, I think we're going to see about it in a few years. Unfortunately, uh, Chris Drury is going to end up hopefully not being on what was my second video on this channel, which was uh, the worst draft picks in Rangers history. So, and we all know who number one is, unfortunately, because of the success that came behind him. But you also don't know about that until it happens. So, shots for <laughs> shots for all current and former B and B employees. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. The Rangers and Islanders free agent targets will not break the bank. Uh, I'm gonna start this one, and I'm gonna say I'm only gonna say beer because uh, free agent targets. There isn't much in free agency. There's a chance the Islanders could go after. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog, I have no idea why. Because when you look at Gabriel Landeskog's game, you go, oh, he's a physical player, plays in front of the net, plays with top players, and he's got leadership skills. Oh, wait, you're already paying Anders Lee. So what will you need another one for? Um, yeah. I, I think Landeskog, I, I just don't. I, I, I know Lou Lamorello is supposedly in on him, and he's going to kick the tires, but I, I, I ultimately think he – I know Adrian Dater said yesterday that the talks have turned for worse with Landeskog. 
But I, if he, I have a feeling he goes back to Colorado. I, I just think there's a lot of hardball and posturing going on there. But I, 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 I just see the Islanders kind of just bringing back Palmieri, getting their RFAs under, you know, under contract. And then maybe if there's enough space to add like a, a decent player, I just don't get how you add Landis Gog or Tarasenko at that point. I don't think Tarasenko is going anywhere. I think Doug Armstrong was serious when he said, I'm taking him back and I'm not going to trade you right now because the market was just crap for him. I, apparently from what we heard, it was what Leo Komarov's uh, a second round pick and something else. The rock Anthony said, uh, yeah, that's, not that's not going to get it done. Yeah. And, um, Oh, by the way, was this a beer or a shot or buying? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say beer because I I just don't know what the targets are. If it's Philip to know, I hope to God they don't overpay on him because Ariana said it before. I was looking at the comments and she said, you know, he's not a he's not a six million dollar player. That's a second line center. He's more of a third line center at like four to five. And I I totally agree with that. I, yeah, I, just, I, I could I could stomach that five million over. Five years, maybe, maybe. And I mean, I'm 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 overpaying him right now. So Here's let's just get that gone. Uh, uh, Coleman get, to get Coleman and reunite him with Gaudreau. I don't. I mean, I would like Blaine Coleman, but not at what I think he'll be asking for, especially after seeing some of the overpayments on this market. So I, I would probably stay away from him, and I don't want to add too much to the bottom six because you got to upgrade somewhere else. You got to upgrade at center before you really go a- adding someone like Coleman. Which, uh, so first things first, so Dano would not qualify as breaking the bank. I don't know, because it, 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 breaking the bank, it, it, it's a term relative to play. Now, if, if you're getting Dano $6 million and he ends up on your third line, you are breaking the bank for a third line center. Right, that's 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 ludicrous, and I think that's where you just say no. Uh, I did say I have another name for you, and another name if the Rangers whiff on the no, if or, or if he asks on too much, um, or if he asks for too much, it's uh, it's Eric Hall. Eric Hall is a free agent. He had twenty nine goals for the first season for the um, uh, Vegas Golden Knights under Gerard Gallant. He's only twenty nine. I can't say that enough. So like it feels him. like he's been in the league 9,000 years, but he hasn't. Great. That would be a great pickup for the Rangers. Actually, as a matter of fact, if Dano even starts saying, no, I think I will show take a $5.5 million deal. <laughs> no, give me Eric Hala, and you could probably that, get him for $2 million. Russian. That That is definitely that more of a Russian. That is a I didn't know the rule in the yards, though. I, I came to win. All right. All right. It was spur of the moment. <laughs> so, it's terrible. Rather pay for Coleman than to know. Uh, Sean, here's the one thing about Coleman, though. I sorry, I sorry, sorry, Phil. No, no. We, we've been saying all along we need a guy that wins faceoffs. Coleman would end up being the center on that unit, and he has a 42 percent career faceoff percentage. No, yeah, that that's a no for me. And if it comes down to those two players at five million, I'm, I'm taking to know that because no is a to know is a close. Uh, close to Selkie Connor, and they need that defensive presence there. So, just to, and just to say this for the record, um, I've kind of said before the Rangers need, and Martinuk is Martinuk is a good option. Corrali is okay for I fourth line Getzlaff in New York. You what? I don't see Getzlaff coming to New York, and Andrew Kopp. I'm going to tell you right now, good luck getting him out of Winnipeg because he just had a great season for a middle six guy. He's, he would cost a lot, although I would love to have Andrew Cobb. Well, we were I was trying to advocate for going to get Mason Appleton. Call Seattle. So, um, <laughs> all right, moving on to the next one. The NHL is screwing the Islanders with their first 12 games on the road. You can tell I was programming this thinking Anthony was going to be with us. No, it's not screwing them. Uh, it, this is a shot. Uh, this is what happens basically with a lot of um, organizations whenever they're – doing construction. There's a long way off. The Devils had the Prudential Center. Their first home game wasn't until the end of October. The uh, Rangers were remodeling uh, Mass Square Garden. Their first game wasn't until the end of October. This Their first home game is, I think, the second week of November. But, I mean, 
it all evens out because I think the month of December is almost all orange on their sheet. So no, it's a shot. Yeah, it's a shot. And I knew about this a while back as I told you and Anthony previously that I was talking to someone who was a temperature taker at the UBS uh, construction site. And this person overheard um, Barry Trotz and some of the Islanders higher ups. I believe maybe one of Ledecky or Malkin was involved with it and maybe Tim Lewicki, but um, they were saying that, the the opening is going to be delayed and it's going to be sometime into the season, possibly December, that the first games would be played there. So, you know what? You're, they're not screwing the team. The, the building is not finished yet. Yeah. That's, that's what happens. As yeah. you listed before, and there's two other teams in recent memory that have gone through this. So, yeah. And by the way, uh, Alyssa, they missed the President's Trophy by one point. Vancouver won it. Yeah, two- uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, is there a throwback? Yes. Uh, that's what they're gonna do. They're 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 following the leader. Islanders and the other guys got some grit on there. TD first comment of the day. You made this comment yesterday, long before we even uh, got on. And um, yeah, all the great players are for the playoffs, not the regular season. That is right. And now you have to make the playoffs. That's where the key part is. Uh, you know what? For, before I move on to the next one, uh, do you think do you think Washington's already taken the step down further than Pittsburgh is going to right now? I know who's Washington really lost though. They just dealt I Brandon mean, Dillon for two it, draft picks, and they lost Big Vitek Vanacek. Uh, Sam Sonov's a starter. I, I mean, sure, uh, Vanacek was. Sam Sonov is their starter going forward. I, I'm okay. not. I, I'm not worried about them. I mean, if anything, Brendan Dillon is a bigger loss than Vitek Vanacek right now. So I, I would. I would say that no. And then Pittsburgh. I mean, they lost Jared McCann to uh, to Toronto, and then he was taken by Seattle. So why? I mean, I don't know. I don't know really if. Pittsburgh is going to get any better unless they bring back Jeff Carter and Jeff Carter continues to play the way that he did down the stretch towards the end of the season and in the playoffs. So I think Pittsburgh is probably a little worse off right now than Washington, honestly. And for all the time is unbeaten. So it's yeah. uh, hard to say when that's going to happen. Yeah. All right, everybody kind of the one moment I was both dreading and I really can't wait to, st- to not say his name anymore. Um, Vegas is in on the Jack Eichel sweepstakes. I'm gonna say beer because I, I just I think that that they wanted to get rid of Mark Andre Fleury. They had to make a decision with a goaltender, but this looks like a clear salary dump. So I I think they're in on it, even though it's just a hunch at this point. They've been linked to him in the past, and insiders have kind of said there. Yeah, and there you go. There's my tweet there. That, that's me at 92 and 82. Follow me. And we also have one from our guest last week, Stat Boy Steven. Yeah, uh, uh, Steven and I are once again on the same page. It's just, I, that's what I think. I, I think they're in on it. it. I think they have some assets. I think Vegas is probably the biggest competition to the Rangers at this point. And yeah, we're kind of discussing it right now because that's what this is. It's a salary dump. You don't. You don't take the type of player that they took who really doesn't have upside as an NHL player and straight up just to get rid of that salary. It just <laughs> that that's another that's another salary dump. It's, it's what it is. Yeah. And and again, Justin, this is absolutely true. The reigning Vezina trophy winner found out he was traded from Twitter. Um just like now, the- granted, I mean, it's not the first case. Obviously, I could use the baseball metaphor again, Wilmer Flores. But I mean, this, th- that's just total disrespect from Vegas. And I know it's not the, the GM that drafted him, it's not the coach that, that had him. And Pete DeBoer, dust. He hates Marc Andre Fleury. I have no idea why. 
even right now, still, I'm sitting there going, you got to be kidding me. I'm not a big Pete DeBoer fan. I'm really not. And uh, it, it just, it, this was disrespectful to Mark andre Fleury, a guy who's really been a class act throughout his entire career. A, a lovable guy, a fan favorite. You, you don't, you don't do this to the reigning <laughs> president trophy winner. So, uh, and by the way, and also let's not forget. And yes, uh, Elrog did mention Vegas, but then again, I think everybody would have said Vegas could get in on him because Vegas yeah. is in on everybody. El Elrog did, but we, I mean, like I said, the insiders have been saying this for a while. The insiders said it even further back that they think that Vegas was a, a dark horse for him. So, I mean, but I mean, um, it's, I, I feel bad for Flurry. I mean, it's amazing. The guy that I used to make so many jokes about in the mid uh, last decade, because like, hey, nice try, but I dodged your shot again. And it's, he's now like, he's the face of that franchise. He's the first superstar that they had. And Pete the Boar basically went in and went, no, get me another goalie. And at first they're like, oh, they just got Robin Leonard for goalie depth. Then it was Robin Leonard took his job. Then it's, all right, well, you got to trade Flurry last offseason. And then they, he went back. It's it's Father Tom. He he he's 36 going on 37. He was the 2003 draft, the first overall pick in that draft by Pittsburgh. They traded with Florida to get that first overall pick. And you, you know what? You're eventually he's going to regress. Like is he going to regress this upcoming season? It's more than possible. Usually players in their age, like 37 or so season, that's when you start seeing a real sharp drop-off in play. And with goalies, it's tough because there's a lot of wear and tear on the body for a goaltender. Being in a, like a butterfly position, all mm -hmm. the time, a lot of pressure on your hips and your knees. So in, I can see why they did it. I can see the salary reasons too, but – you got to remember, Leonard's the younger goaltender that's going to give you more production going forward. He's also side younger, so you gotta you gotta manage your team better. And this was the right move for them to make, but it just the way they handled it just was not class. -all. Here's the funny thing, by the way, um, I agree 100 percent with what John says right here. Yes. Yes. The problem is then I kind of have that Gemini thing, stare, stepping out of my body to look at myself and go, you know, he did make the Stanley Cup finals with two different teams in two different conferences. And um, uh, Vegas was really good. But then again, the thing is they always – Pete DeBoer teams always seem to be able to punch up. And then when they're the favorite, they can't punch back down. It's it's sort of like you can beat Bald Bull and Sandman in Punch Out, but you lose the Glass Joe and Von Kaiser. If you take your Nintendo, <laughs> simple. And I say this as a hardcore gamer who is now playing Skyward Sword. By the way, if you haven't downloaded it and you have the Switch, go do it. It the controls kind of suck a little bit. They're kind of hard to get, you know, really down to, but it's a good game. Oh, you got to be a real geek to be a hardcore gamer. Yeah. <laughs> as, yeah. As, as, as the Hylian shield is over my head. Yeah. Um, so, all right, moving on to the next one. We have uh, Philly has made the best and worst trades of this offseason. And I'm buying everybody around. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the best, although uh, you can argue the Ryan Ellis trade for basically pucks. Um, but on the other hand, what are you doing trading a first round pick for Rasmus versus the line? And then I think it's two more seconds. Are you kidding? I mean, this is, and by the way, thank you. This, right. is, this is the reason this is the, when, whenever I have a miserable day at work, that's what I'm thinking about. I mean, that's just, that's just, oh my God, I can't help but think. We saw that trade on Friday and all of us just kind of looked over and went, oh, the Rangers are going to get Conor David for Pavel Buchnevich. That's where our thinking was. And then, of course, Sammy Blaze, second round pick. We all went, all right, well, now what's going on with this? But apparently the offers just weren't there for Booch. So that's, that's it on that. Hey, John? Yeah. 
no, I, I, I'm I'm going to disagree with that part because of the fact that, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to make this very short here. Vancouver was in on Butch Nimich, and the ninth overall pick was in play, obviously. So that would have been better than anything that they could have gotten from St. Louis. So I, I, I Drury made a rookie mistake with that move, but getting to this, uh, you have to buy everybody around. Ryan Ellis was a great deal. That was a great deal for Philadelphia. You, you got a solid top four, maybe even a top two defenseman in Ryan Ellis for what Nolan Patrick and Philip Myers. And then Nolan Patrick got flipped again from Nashville to, uh, to Vegas because apparently Brad McCrimmon loves Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan, Nolan Patrick. Wow, I did it. Wow. No, I know. I caught that at the end of it, too. But you got it first. But, um, yeah, so um, – but Drury made a rookie mistake there. Yeah, Mike, he did. But um, he, he, the Rasmus risked the line deal. What was Fletcher thinking there? You traded away a first and some for a freaking traffic cone? You needed less offensive defensemen. You needed more guys that were good two-way guys. To yeah, Goldberg. Thanks, thank you, Goldberg. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't understand, and this might have had something to do with it because, geez, that was a bad, bad trade for Ristolainen. So, uh, but you know what? I I'm actually gonna defend what he, they're doing with the Sammy Blaze thing. I like Sammy Blaze for the bo- for the bottom six, and especially the fourth line. That might be true. It might yeah. be Gallant that has his had had a say, but I think that James Dolan has had a big say. So yeah. we'll, we'll more on that later. All right, but um, well, the, I can't wait to hear because I have a feeling that might be the topic of my Falcon opinion. So, um. And chewing the gum. All right. Carolina's decision with Alex Nedeljkovic is the most puzzling move of the offseason. And I, I, I got to buy everybody around on this one again. Um, it's, it's just they were talking about non-tendering him because he wanted $3 million. He just got rookie of the year consideration in a year where it was clear cut um, that uh, – Kaprizov was going to win. And then on top of it all, they don't have a goalie. What are you doing? You, you want to, you want to be even more baffled? Like I, I, I your, my, your head might explode when you hear this, but um, Carolina apparently is one of the teams in on Darcy Kemper. <laughs> and you're going to pay him four and a half to five million dollars what is Dundon doing Don Waddell and Tom, and Tom Dundon have to be the two biggest pair like the two biggest idiots I've seen in recent memory and I, like, I'm saying this nicely because I'm not happy with Chris Drury's tenure so far but holy shit what are they doing in Carolina what are they doing how do you let Nadelkovich go when he gets called the significant color votes he only wants three million dollars. And yeah. you're going to Darcy Kemper for what? Because he's more experienced than Nadelkovich? Yeah, because Darcy Kemper in his 18 playoff games has been so great. Give me a break. Well, they then I don't know what's going on down there. Let them let them eat themselves. Let them burn themselves to a crisp. I don't care whatever they do, but let them deconstruct that team because it's one less team for the Rangers to worry about then at that point. So go ahead. Carolina, blow yourselves up for all I care. Yeah, I mean that's 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 just so unbelievable that you you can cut ties with them. Because by the way, here's the other thing: they could have gotten both Kemper and Nadelkovic and only spent seven million dollars on. It's just uh, I, I I have no idea on what they're doing with that. And then of course uh, Dougie Hamilton. Let's say they just don't think they have the money. Under the cap, which I think they do. They're they're not in bad shape. They're not in dire straits. All right, John. Here's a topic neither one of us want to talk about, but unfortunately, thank you very much, boys, because we do. The NHL and the NHL was embarrassed by the last two picks of the first round of this year's draft. Go ahead. Well, we're not talking about the player when it comes to one of them. We're talking about Chicago and what they did with the. Um with bringing all the women up on stage, obviously that's 
you know, that that's, oh, let, it, let us try to gain favor by doing something like that. Was cringy. I even said so in the video. Everybody was watching, was saying some of the same, th excuse me, saying some of the same things. But, um, yeah, and Logan Mayu, the guy went out and said, don't draft me. I don't, and he did the right thing. He owned up to his mistake. He went out and said, don't draft me. And then Montreal went and did it because they were afraid he wasn't going to be around at the end of the second round when they picked. He said, don't draft me. What are you doing? Why? Does this organization not have any type of morality to them? What is wrong with it? What is wrong with Bergman? Was he, did he like suffer a major concussion? Did he, does, he, does he suffer from amnesia? Did he take a like a, 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 a traumatizing blow to the head? I, I just don't understand it. I, it. Embarrassing by Montreal standards to, to literally go out and do something they were told not to do. And then Chicago, I don't even want to get into that until the facts are out. It just, that whole situation is an absolute shit storm that's about to blow up. So, well, with, with the Chicago situation, and by the way, I'm buying everybody around in this. The NHL should be horrified by this yeah. because um, let me start with the Chicago situation. The Chicago situation, they're like, look at all the women we got on the stage. You know what's being accused of you. And by the way, if you guys would have actually stepped up and done it uh, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have had to worry about this. But instead, it, I think they were on the Stanley Cup finals run and – uh, I mean, all the specifics about that, I, I don't want to get into it that much. All right. So, again, should have handled it 10 years ago. Getting back to Montreal, this kid actually said the right things publicly to actually say, I'm going, I'm, I should go and learn from this. He should have been able to renounce himself from the NHL draft. You can't in the NHL draft, in the NBA, the N NFL, and you actually can renounce yourself from it. Oh, you can? When I thought yeah. you couldn't. No, you, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. It, it was actually said on the telecast, I believe. So, All right, because uh, um, not Jason Blake. I'm trying to remember the guy's name that, that goes with uh, Steve Dangle. He said you, you can't. Uh, Jesse, you're still, Blake. Jesse Blake, thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's... It, uh, but again, it, the kid basically said, don't draft me. Then everybody does it. And Mark Bergevin steps in and goes, all right, we're taking him. Oh, we're going to help the player and uh, help him get through this. Okay, good. And you still have now it, you still have to address what's happening with the victim in this. And it, it's it. And then Bergevin doesn't have any answers. He, he his his responses were terrible. So if you had every NH NHL GM do an honor system and then he just steps up and goes, all right, I'll take him. He wasn't a sliding guy. They might have been honoring his request because this kid didn't deserve to be drafted after what he did. And certainly doesn't show the maturity. But, you know, it's you, you can't have it like that just in general. All right. So that was the end of our board talk segment. What do you think about the Rangers? Are they the losers in this year's draft? Uh Who's the gonna is either team gonna break the bank on free agents this year? Uh, Jack Eichel to uh, Sin City, possibly, and uh, Philadelphia, the best of times and the worst of trades. Um, put them all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more, so check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.